The first question is from Mehtab, West Bengal, India. Is it permissible to convert a church or a temple into a mosque after that area is conquered by the Muslims? And a similar question of the same category is asked by Munir from London, UK. What are your views regarding Erdogan, the president of Turkey, converting the Hagia Sophia from the status of a museum to that of a mosque? There are two questions asked by the brothers. The first question is that is it permissible in Islam to convert a church or a temple or house of worship of a non-Muslim to a mosque after that land is conquered by the Muslims? The reply to this is yes. There are several hadith and there are several references that it is permissible to convert the house of worship of the non-Muslims to a mosque if the Muslim wants to after they conquer the land. But regarding those places of worship where there is a contract with the non-Muslims, for example, if a non-Muslim has a contract with the Muslims and they have a treaty that we accept you as our rulers or if the non-Muslim they surrender and they agree to be under the rulership of the Muslims, then these non-Muslims are called as dhimmi. So as far as non-Muslims who are dhimmi, who are protected by the Muslim rulers, in this there is a special condition and a treaty that their lives will be protected by the Muslim rulers, their houses will be protected, their place of worship will be protected. So in such a case where there is a contract between the Muslim ruler or they have surrendered to the Muslim ruler or they have invited them to take over from the ruler which is unjust and if there is a contract and there is no war, in these cases they are called as dhimmi and the non-Muslim they have to pay a jazia for protection. Under these conditions, the Muslims are supposed to protect the lives of the non-Muslims, their homes as well as their house of worship. But they cannot build new house of worship which belong to non-Muslims. They cannot expand it but they can keep it and here the Muslims will not touch the house of worship of the non-Muslims. But if the Muslims conquer the land, in this case it is perfectly permissible for the Muslims to convert it into a mosque. As far as the second question is concerned, that what are my views regarding the issue that has taken place today? And we know that the court has given the verdict and Erdogan, the president of Turkey, has said that the Hagia Sophia, which was a museum, would be reverted back to a mosque. Let me first give you a brief regarding the history of Hagia Sophia so that people who are unaware will know about it and then I will give my views. As far as Hagia Sophia is concerned, it's a monument which is there for about 1,500 years. It was built by Emperor Justinian I in 537 CE. It took about a few years for him to build and it was a cathedral of the Greek Orthodox. And it remained a cathedral for several centuries. In 1204, during the Fourth Crusaders, they converted the Greek Orthodox Cathedral into a Roman Catholic Church until 1261. So initially for 667 years, it was a Greek Orthodox Cathedral. Then after that, for 57 years, from 1204 to 1261, for 57 years, it was the Roman Catholic Church. Again later on, when the Christian Byzantines came to power, it was again converted back into a Greek Orthodox Cathedral until the Ottoman rulers, until Sultan Muhammad Fateh, he conquered Constantinople in 1453. Then it was converted into a mosque. So since 537 up to 1453 for more than 900 years it remained a Greek Orthodox Cathedral then for a few years it was the Roman Catholic Church then went back to become a Greek Orthodox Cathedral and it was the largest church in the world where it was built the biggest in-house covering and the dome was the largest 
It remained largest for a thousand years until 1500 when a new church was made. In 1453, Sultan Muhammad Fateh, he conquers Constantinople and then there are documents available that he purchases the Hagia Sophia and after purchasing it, he converts it into a mosque. It remains a mosque till 1931 until Mustafa Kamal Ataturk he takes over Turkey and he declares it as a secular state. For four years it was closed and he passes a verdict in 1934 that the mosque should be converted into a museum. And since 1935 till today, 2020 July, that's the 11th of July, it remained a museum until today. And all these years, for about 85 years, there were many cases saying that why is the Hagia Sophia a museum? Because Ataturk declared it that this is a sign of secularism, that we want to make it into a museum, it will not be a church, it will not be a mosque. And since that, there were many cases that have been filed that it is wrong that it was converted into a museum. And recently, the council in Turkey, the highest administrative court, it passed a resolution that it was illegal for Mustafa Kamal Ataturk to convert into a museum. And today, mashallah, the court of Turkey has given a verdict and has said that it was illegal for Ataturk to convert it into a museum. And Alhamdulillah, Erdogan, after the court verdict, he signed a resolution that this structure, Hagia Sophia, which was earlier a church, then became a mosque, then a museum, it will be transferred from the Department of Tourism and it will go to the Department of Religious Authority of Turkey. Now this has created a lot of controversy and today if you read the newspapers and the media, they are disagreeing with the decision taken by Turkey, by the Turkish government, by Erdogan and you find right from USA, Trump, Russia, Greece, all of them condemning it is wrong, UNESCO, many non-Muslim organizations and you find the media that they disagreed, they have been threatened and said it is wrong. But the saddest part, what I read in the media, that there were many Muslim countries and many so-called Muslim dais and Muslim scholars from the Western countries said what Turkey did and what Erdogan did is wrong. And to support their claim, they said that we know in history the Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him. He was asked to pray in Jerusalem. He did not pray. He said, if he prays there, people will make a mosque. And then he prayed somewhere else. And the Masjid Aqsa was made. And all this is about how we encourage and have a relationship. And they quoted the verse of the Quran, Surah Hajj, chapter 22, verse number 40, saying it is not permitted to destroy synagogues or the church. And Quran is against it. And I was shocked to read the views of many of the Muslim guys from the Western countries and from the Arab world, saying it is wrong. What are my views regarding what Turkey did is correct or not, or what Erdogan did is right or wrong? As far as my views are concerned, the hadith quoted and the incidents quoted by the Muslims regarding Hazrat Umar, may Allah be pleased with him, that he did not pray and he paid some wells, and there were treaties between Muslims and others, that your lives are safe and your places of worship are safe and Muslims will not enter your places of worship. All these references are when there is a treaty between the Muslims and the non-Muslims. As I mentioned in the first answer to the first question that can a holy place, a church or a temple be converted to a mosque? After it is conquered, the answer is yes. Only if there is a treaty between the Muslims and the non-Muslims or if the non-Muslims surrender or they are dhimmis, non-Muslim living under the law of the Muslim rule, Islamic rule, that is the only condition where the Muslims give them security and they are paying a jazia. As far as when the Uthman rulers, when they conquered Constantinople, it was a conquest, it was a war. So it is wrong to give examples of 
a treaty between the Muslims and non-Muslims and say that same way Turkey should manage it is totally wrong. So if there is a conquest, if there is a war and if the Muslims rule, and this is a common law all over the world, we find so many non-Muslim rulers when they conquer the land, they occupy the mosque, many of them demolish the mosque. You have example of the Crusaders. The best example is Spain. There were hundreds of mosques and most of them were either converted to churches or they were made into museums or they were destroyed. Hardly you find there was not a Muslim who could openly give the azan. Why don't people object to that? So this was the normal law that once you conquer that becomes your land. So once it becomes your land you have a right to do what you want to do. Later on after World War I, World War II, then the Geneva Convention, all that is later on. So before that the rule was once you conquer a land it becomes part of your land and you can do what you feel is right. So based on that, this was the conquest done by Sultan Muhammad Fateh. And in a conquest, they have a right to keep the house of worship, to convert into a mosque. It is a right and you find several examples. In fact, if you read the hadith of the Prophet Muhammad I'll give you one incident which I don't want to give it, but to reply to these Muslims who are attacking Turkey and attacking Erdogan, that if we read the seer of the Prophet, we know in the seerah of the Prophet, when Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam migrated to Medina and later on he came back to Makkah, during Fateh Makkah, what did he do? When he came back with about 10,000 sahabas and it was a victory, the first thing he did was he went to Kaaba, which was a house of worship of the non-Muslims. There were 360 idols in Kaaba. He went in the Kaaba and recited the verse of the Quran from Surah Isra chapter number 17 verse number 81 which says that وَقُلْ جَعَلْ حَقْ وَزَاقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ قَانَ زَوْقَ When truth is hurled against falsehood, falsehood perishes. For falsehood is by its nature bound to perish. And he destroyed all the idols. Imagine today if the non-Muslims object and say what it is wrong. Will the Muslims agree to them? It was a house of worship of the non-Muslims, right or wrong, yes. But it was a conquest, though it was a bloodless conquest, it was an easy thing. Once they ruled the land, they destroyed the idols. And that is in Islamic history. So do you mean to say what Prophet Muhammad did is wrong? And many may not be aware that Makkah is also mentioned in the Bible. If you read the Bible, in the book of Psalms, chapter number 84, verse number 5 to 7, it says, Blessed are those people who travel to the valley of Bakka. And the same Bakka, the word is also mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Imran, chapter number 3, verse number 96, which says, the first place of worship, the first house of worship of Allah was Bakka. Same word what the Quran mentions for Makkah, Bakka, is also mentioned in the Christian Bible. Imagine today the Christians say that Makkah belongs to the Christian. And the Muslims should give it to them. Will the Muslims believe? Will the Muslims agree? And the answer is no. Imagine someone comes with a bright idea that let us convert the haram into a museum. Will the Muslims believe? Will the Muslims agree? And the answer is no. So what you have to realize at that time this was the law. And at that time you see the seerah of the Prophet. What did he do? What happened today, many of the Muslims are being influenced by the Western culture. Because they are staying in Western countries, they want to change the Islamic history. They want to give a ruling. They quote verses from the Quran. And the verse of the Quran that was quoted of Surah Hajj, chapter number 22, verse number 40, which says that, Quran says that house of worship should not be destroyed. There is no verse in the Quran saying that. It is a misunderstanding. If you want to know the real context, Start from verse number 1 before. Surah Hajj, chapter number 24, verse number 39 says that you are permitted to fight against those non-Muslims who have done wrong. And Allah will aid you and protect you. This is the first verse of the Quran giving permission for the Muslims when they migrate from Makkah to Medina to fight against the non-Muslims. First verse. Then verse number 40 of Surah Hajj, chapter number 22 says that and those who leave their homes because they say that our Lord is one, Allah is one. And it continues that 
if Allah wouldn't have checked one force with the other, then the churches and the synagogues and the mosques where the name of Allah is taken would have been destroyed. It doesn't say that it is not permitted to destroy. It's telling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, number one it's telling, it is giving permission for the Muslims to fight against the non-Muslims who have done wrong, who have done transgression. And then it says that those Muslims who leave their home because they believe in Tawheed, believe in one God, Allah is there to protect you. And then it says, if Allah wouldn't have checked one group against the other, then the places of worship, like the synagogue, like the church, like the mosque, that would have been destroyed. Giving indication doesn't say that you cannot destroy. For knowing the real meaning, go to the tafasil. And if you read Qurtubi, Qurtubi says very clearly that what I said in the reply to the first answer, that if there is a treaty between the Muslims and the non-Muslims, if the non-Muslims become dhimmi under the rule of the Muslim rulers, if they agree that the Muslims are the rulers, or if they surrender and there's no conquest, and if they are paying jazia, if they are paying a tax for protection, it becomes the duty of the Muslims to protect the lives of the non-Muslim, the dhimmi, to protect the homes and protect the house of worship. But Again, Qurtubi says, you cannot build a new house of worship for the non-Muslim because it is sin. But what is there, it can remain. They cannot expand it also. So if there is a treaty or if the non-Muslims have surrendered, in this case, yes. You cannot occupy it, you protect the house of worship, but cannot build a new one, cannot expand it. But in conquest, if there is a war, and if the conqueror is there, then it is the right of the Muslim ruler to do what he wants because that becomes part of his land. So please don't quote some hadith which is out of context. And there are several hadith of the beloved Prophet Muhammad where he told the Sahaba that go and destroy the idols. Several. He has told Khalid bin Walid, may Allah be pleased with him, go and destroy the idols. There are several. He has told Hazrat Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, go and destroy the idols. There are several, several hadith in Bukhari, in Muslim. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam himself destroyed the idols in Makkah. So please, I would like to request the Muslims that by giving answers, a general common Muslim who may not be aware of the context will agree with the views given by such scholars, which is totally wrong. Is there any scholar, Islamic scholar, who can deny that the Prophet broke the idols? Is there any Islamic scholar who can deny that the Prophet told Hazrat Ali, may Allah be pleased with him, the fourth caliph of Islam, told Khalid bin Walid, may Allah be pleased with him, and many of the Sahabas then go and deface the idols? There is one more hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. It's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, hadith number 3020, as well as Sahih Muslim, hadith number 2476, where Jarir ibn Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, one of the Sahabas, he says that the Prophet, peace be upon him, he called me and he told me that will you relieve for me the Dhul Khalsa? What is Dhul Khalsa? Dhul Khalsa was the place of worship of the non-Muslims in Yemen. It was also called the Kaaba Tul Yaminiya. Kaaba Tul Yaminiya means the Kaaba of the Yemen. And in it, there were idols. He said, will you do a favor for me? Will you destroy it for me? Then Jarir ibn Abdullah, may Allah be pleased with him, he takes with him 150 horsemen and he burns down that house of worship. It's a hadith, a sahih hadith in Bukhari and Muslim. I don't want to tell this, but it is there. That means the Prophet commanded not only to destroy the idols, he even asked them to destroy the place of worship. So when the Muslims are conquering and when they rule that land, it is permitted even to destroy the place of worship. Now this, if you say Quran says you should not destroy churches and synagogues, do you think the Prophet went against the Quran? The context is wrong. That is when there is a treaty between the Muslims and the non-Muslims, when they are dhimmi, when they are under the rule of the Muslims. But generally, it is a fard to destroy the idols if the Muslim conquers the land and if there are idols it becomes the fard and you have several examples of sahabas doing that it is umpteen number of hadiths are there so to try and misguide telling that it is not permissible is totally wrong but destroying the temples or the house of worship is not a fard but if required if it's causing a problem for the muslim ummah the prophet has commanded that 
So how can you say it's not permitted? So what I would like to say that many a time Muslims living in the Western country or even some of the Muslims in the Arab land, you know, trying to be soft to the non-Muslims and trying that they are the one who will support them, they are the one who are going to fund them, etc. They are going to protect them. Many a time they give verdict which is against the Quran and the Sunnah. Be careful. If you are going to go against our Muslim brother, Erdogan, the president of Turkey, or against a Muslim country, there are hardly few people today, Muslim leaders, who can really try and revive the Sunnah. And as I said in my earlier answer, that I don't know of any Muslim leader which is anyway close to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or anyway close to the Khulfa Rashid in the way they ruled or how they were political leaders. No way close, not even one person. Now if one Muslim brother is doing something which is there, which is permitted, why are the Muslims against him? So as far as my view is concerned, Alhamdulillah what Turkey did is completely correct. And if you agree that Muhammad Fateh Sultan, he purchased the mosque. Today we know there are hundreds and thousands of churches in different parts of the world, in the Western countries, in UK, in Europe, in America, which have been purchased by the Muslim organization. If you say that after you purchase, you can't make it into the mosque, that means the Muslim living in the Western country will have to give up all these mosques as to the church. If few centuries back, Emperor Sultan Muhammad Fateh purchases, buys with his own money, and that was one of the reasons. So here we're not talking about conquest. It is purchased. We're not talking about war. It's permitted. After war, you can convert it. Here he purchased it. There are documents. So the court in Turkey said, seeing as the documents, if there was a case filed, that what right does Kamal Ataturk have to convert into a museum? The highest authority in Turkey. It's a legal verdict said what is done by Ataturk is wrong. Now what is bothering USA or Russia or Greece? How can they object? How can they interfere in the personal affairs of Turkey, a Muslim country? And why are the other Muslims supporting the non-Muslims? It is totally wrong. As far as I am concerned, whatever Turkey did is correct. It is permitted in Islam. It is Mustafa, Alhamdulillah. It was a mosque for several years. It was purchased. If I don't support them now, I'll have to tell all the thousands of mosques in the European country and in USA and in Canada, which have been purchased from the church authorities, even they have to give them up. So please, Allah clearly says in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 135, that, Ya you Amun, O you believe, stand out for justice, as true to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it be against yourself, against your parents, against your relatives, whether rich or poor, Allah protects both. So please, if a Muslim has the guts to do something which is close to Quran and Sunnah, it is the duty as Muslims that we should support him and we should encourage him. Hope that answers the question.